So in the box, you're gonna get a setup guide. You're gonna get the feet for the TV set. Over here, you have some other goodies. Looks like the remote control and power cord. But let's take a closer look at everything. So here's everything that we just took out the box. Now there's a few things that I wanna point out here. You do get a quick set guide, user's manual, remote control with the batteries, power cord, and some wire maintenance. So here's the legs that come with the TV set. If you just put them on, it's gonna go really low to the table, but if you flip this up, it's gonna go a lot higher and leave you room for something like an Xbox or gaming system to go below the television set. The older models, but not the newer models. And here's a closer look at the remote control. You have your power button, you have your microphone right there. There's the button for the microphone, your back, home button, play pause. And then down here, there's some hotkeys. But the interesting thing is that Samsung has been putting solar remote controls on all their new models, except for this one. So let me, here's an interesting thing. If you go to a Q series, you get the solar panel right there. See this remote control don't have it, still uses batteries. Now take a look at the remote control that comes with the TU-8000, that's this one right here. They pretty much have the same functionality except for whenever you look at it from the side, you can see that the new remote control is a lot thinner. And remember to stay organized, you wanna get some type of baggie and put all the parts you don't need in there so you can have everything in one spot if you decide to sell your television or something like that later on. To put the feet on very easy, you just take them and slide them to the tracks. And that's pretty much it. Now since we're back here, let's go ahead and go over the inputs. You can see there's two USBs here and you can use these for using mouse, keyboards, thumb drives to play video files. You also have a LAN connection for hooking up to a modem to get internet access. There's two HDMIs here and these are HDMI 2.0. One of them is eARC right here that supports 7.1 audio pass-through and there's a coaxial input right here. Here we have a third HDMI and a fiber optic output. Now if you've seen the last year model, they used to have component video which is no longer there. You can mount it on the wall thanks to the four screw holes right here. It uses M8 screws and any standard wall mount will work. And here's the power input and it does use an angle cable that comes with all the Samsung television sets. And this is what it looks like from a distance. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pull off the plastic and notate there's no plastic on the screen so don't try to pull it off. It's just around the edges. So a few things about this TV set is that it has the Tizen 6.0 operating system that has some new features in it. It has a 60 hertz panel and it will play at 120 hertz motion. Now, this is a great television set for the average user, but keep in mind, it is not a Q-series, so I expect it'll look good, but I don't know how bright it'll be until we get everything out of the box and set up. So uh, we're getting pretty close to seeing what it's all about. And it does have a really low energy cost because it's an edge-lit LED panel, but what is an edge-lit backlight? Let me explain. The TV is gonna be thinner and lighter at the expense of some picture quality. And what I mean by that is that since the LEDs are around the edge of the television set, the center of the television set is not gonna be as uniformed with the picture quality. In fact, you're gonna get more gray whenever you're watching any type of dark scene movie. However, Samsung does have a technology called UHD Dimming that helps this television set achieve a better contrast ratio. But we'll just have to wait until I do a full review to find out. The first thing you'll notice about this television set is that the bezel is very thin. I mean, it looks like a picture frame when it's turned off. Also, look how thin it is from the top all the way down to the bottom, and that's due to the edge lit display. Another thing they did with this TV set is that they moved the Samsung logo to the ends of the TV set instead in the middle that most people are used to. The feet are thin and flat. It doesn't really have much of a premium look, but they're very functional. And just in case you lose your remote control, there's a button down here below the logo you press and hold it, you get this on-screen menu. You can just tap it to get through all the functions and press and hold it to execute. So I made a full video how to set this up with the SmartThings application and the remote control, but I'm gonna use remote control and just kind of go through this really quick. So the first thing you would do is just plug in your antenna or cable box, satellite receiver, Roku, it doesn't matter. Now I will tell you that you will need Wi-Fi to get this to work or plug into ethernet 
if you're planning on using it with the applications. Once you find your network, you wanna press on it, and then you wanna go and enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you get that password in, go ahead and press done at the bottom, and then it should look for your router and connect to it. It does have some terms and conditions. You can read through all the policies. However, if you do not check these off, there's gonna be things in your television set that you will not be able to use later on. Let's say, for example, if you're using like applications or trying to download stuff, it's gonna ask you to sign in terms and conditions before doing that. Now, since this is a brand new TV set, it has the latest firmware, I can go ahead and hit got it, get to the next step. Just a heads up, if you wanna download applications like Plex or Hulu or anything like that, you need to create a Samsung account and keep in mind on that one video I did, it has all these features in there. Now, if you plan on using an over there antenna or if you have a cable box you're gonna plug into it, you need to go ahead and put in the zip code so it knows which providers in your area. Like for example, where I live at, we have AT&T and uh, Spectrum. Once you get that in, go and press on done. So if you wanna use voice assistance, like having Google to control your lights or Alexa to start up your coffee maker, You'll have to choose which one you like and follow the instructions on the screen to get it all set up. Since I already made a full video on this, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and press later. Now, if you have Prime Video or Hulu and you want to be able to have these to pre-install, you can do that. Keep in mind, you gotta make sure you have a Samsung account and read those terms and conditions. And here's a few of the apps you can check off if you like. Once you get that, hit save. hit start watching it will pull up Samsung TV to let you watch networks that are all in the air to streaming in real time but you cannot use it with a DVR or anything like that Now we're gonna take a look at the TV interface. This television set does use Tizen 6.0. This is part of the new operating system. Uh, here's your home screen. And these are direct applications that you can go to. But let's say you wanna move them around. All you need to do is just hold the center of the remote control. You'll get this pop-up and you can remove them or you can move them. Once you put it where you want, just let go. And that way you can have all your favorites in the front. So as we go over, this is how you get to your application store just by pressing on the center of the remote control. And here's the app store. So let's go look through a few of these so you guys can see what it comes with. Under video, it does come with HBO Max, Yelplex, which is pretty popular. It also has Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube for Kids, YouTube TV, YouTube, and some other popular ones over here. It does have Netflix, Discovery Plus. It does support Disney Plus, and there's Hulu. So those are the major ones that people are looking for. Another thing people ask me is, does it have a lot of built-in IP TV? And it does not, but you can use external sources for that. If we hit back on remote control, you got sports here. And these are the major networks, NBC Sports, and that's about it, UFC. Under games, this is where you can have a little bit of fun with the television set. So you have like Salotaire, and a few other games you can use the remote control with or you can plug in different uh, USB devices. And then under lifestyle, we have Apple Music, Spotify, Samsung Health if you have one of their smartwatches. And this is where you can do Amazon Alexa with the TV set. And you can use Google voice commands. You have iHeartRadio. You also have Pandora, D3, 
Deezer, and Sirius XM. So those are gonna be your major music players. And under information, you have a web browser. You can also do a couple of other news stations down here, but that's the majority there. Under education is very limited. It's only three apps in there. And that's about it. Now they do have things grouped up here. You have your music radio, apps to kill time. And if you have a Samsung smartphone, you can do screen mirroring with Samsung Smart View. And these are the applications that are also available for that. Before we exit out of here, let's go back here to the top. And if you want to use these applications, you would need to sign into a Samsung account or you would need to create one right here. Now, let me give you an example. If we click on, let's say, HBO Max, which is not installed. I click on this and press install. You can see right there, it's asking me to sign in to be able to use that application. Here's a quick look at what the internet browser looks like. Again, you can plug a keyboard and mouse in it, control this, but I'm doing all this from remote control. Last few things I wanna show you guys on this application. If we go over here to settings, you can see you can do your standard mode. You have your natural mode, movie mode, filmmaker mode, dynamic. When it comes to sound, you have your standard, you have your adapter sound, and you have your amplified. And this is where you can go from TV to optical. And then there's your sleep timer internet and these are your uh, temperature settings of the TV. Now last thing I'll show you guys if you go into your settings here and go down here to sound and we go down to expert mode this is where you can turn the eARC off and on. Again this is really for sending 7.1 audio through the system. It can support Dolby Outmost compatibility speakers. You have auto volume speakers feedback. Then if you go here to general this is where you can change your voice assistants like Bixby or Amazon Alexa. And it does have Apple AirPlay. You can send Apple computers or iPhones over to this screen and use it as a second display. So now we're gonna check the input lag using the HDMI 2.0 cable with 2.3 HPC. So if I plug this on the television set, we're getting about a 50.5 milliseconds. Now let's put the TV set in gaming mode and see it, how much it improves. So all you need to do is go down to your menu and then go to settings and then just go ahead and turn on the gaming mode right there. The TV will get a little bit darker whenever you put it in this mode. So let's go ahead and check it again. So it drops down to 9.6 to 9.8 milliseconds. So that's pretty respectful when it comes to a television set. So if you have a gaming console like a PS5 or Xbox, just keep in mind, you don't have to buy the remote control. This TV set will control the basic functions. All I need to do is just turn it on and the TV will automatically detect the unit. You can see now it says PS5 on the screen. Now the remote control is programmed. So I can do the very basic features like set up the HDR right here. The last feature I'm gonna show you on this television set, if you go down here, they now have game HDR. If you turn that on, it's gonna give you the HGIG standard optimization for HDR gaming. Now this one is not like the other ones where it has the pop-up that has the complete gaming interface. So that is a takeaway compared to the Q68, but we'll go into that in the future when I'll make a video and comparing the two models. All right guys, so you know we're gonna be doing more videos on this television set, but I just wanted to get out of the box, go through the menus, and give you guys a quick overview of what I see so far in the television set. To me, it seems like Samsung is dividing a line. For example, there's gonna be your Q series and your Neo Q series, and then you're gonna have the TU series and the AU series. So what I mean by that is, it looks like they're changing the interface so you have limitations and like the AU8000. Also, you don't get some of the features like you don't get the multi view and you don't get the solar remote control. So I know they're doing this to keep the price down, but that is the differences that I see so far. Also, I wanna do like some tests on the screen because I wanna check this edge lit and see if the contrast ratio is good as the last year model TU8000. And those videos will be coming out soon in the future. But I'm Tech Steve, make sure you go and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.